Hello, I'm going through updating this tutorial, or just this video really, to our latest workflow. Um, yeah, so here's our, uh, in this video we're gonna, you know, make our, make our course able to be uh, basically ready to be played in game, uh, bar a, a few things. So we have our course, um, here's, a, here's a quick thing that I, that I, that I made. Um, one, uh, some notes uh, before we export is everything has to be above y equals zero. Um, there's an automatic death plane right here, um, just the way the game's coded. So everything above y equals zero. Um, our track road width, uh, we typically want to be about 30 meters. Um, and this is going to be auto automatically um, scaled up by 100 times when we export, um, or practically. And then, uh, yeah, so in-game it's, you know, 3,000 meters, and that's about, yeah, that's about good. Um, 25 meters is is definitely on the small side. It's definitely doable. Um, 36, 37, that starts to feel a bit, you know, overscaled and not not crazy stuff is happening. Um, that, fe you know, feels a bit boring. But anyhow, um so yeah, so how do we make sure that our, our road width is about 30, 30 meters across? Um, so we're gonna select this edge loop, um, zoom in on it, um, and then we're gonna go edit preferences, uh, and then we're gonna uh, go and find measure it, which is a default Blender add-on. Um, we're gonna enable it, also you can you can search here, measure tools, yada yada. Um, and then once what's it's installed, uh, you might have to yeah. Uh, whoops, uh, did I actually start recording? I did. Good. That is that is a good thing. Um, edit preferences. Yeah. Um, no installs for other things. Okay. Never mind. Edit preferences. Um, God. No. Sorry. You pull up this this side menu by the hotkey N and Fernelli. Um, view measure tools. Uh, and then we selected some segments. So we're gonna say segment, and then we wanna show that. So we have 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, 7 7.5, which happens to be scaled to 30. I know this because this is my second time going through this. Anyhow, um, so hide, that's that's perfect. That's what we want. But you know, obviously if it wasn't, then we'd, we'd go ahead and scale this up. Obviously like S10 is to scale it up by 10, right? And then when you are scaling, from, remember that, oh yeah, it can go below equal, Y equals zero. That, that happens. So you scale it and then you forget about it and then there's a part that's below by equals zero and then you just die when you come across that section. Anyhow, um, yeah, so our track is 30 meters across. Um, and uh, the other thing we have to check is um, the normals. So the normals are the uh, all the tangent um, vectors that point out from each object. So for example, these these all are going to be pointing straight up, um, you know, because that's that's tangent to them. But then these ones are going to have some things pointing out, pointing out in this direction. Maybe anyhow, um, that's that's how the game knows what what it should calculate. Um, so I. It only shows one side of the face and only takes care of collisions one side, and that's the side that the normals are pointing towards you. Um, so that way, you know, it's not showing the back side of, well, I'm not maybe looking at the road from underneath, so maybe I don't need to show it and waste a bunch of computational power. If you have a two-sided texture like a fence that you do want to be able to see both sides, that's cool. Um, we are able to explicitly say that. Um, later in once we go through the, the process of creating the BRES file. Um, but you will have to duplicate in the collision that face and then flip the normals. So let's talk about these normals. So how do we see where they're, they're coming from? Uh, the best thing to do is to go up into this overlays menu. Um, check this. If you turn off all overlays, we won't have anything. You know, we can select here and nothing will, will show even though we're we are obviously selecting something, it won't show us. Now it's gonna show us. When we select face orientation, then we see, hey, everything is, everything blue that we want to be blue is good. This is red because we are presumably not seeing the wall from this side. That's cool. 
but it is blue on the side, which means, hey, that's gonna do collision and show it this way. Cool, awesome. If there was anything red, uh, you know, maybe a whole section or, or whatnot, uh, what we can do is select all, and then they're just like select linked, right? L to select linked, Alt N. That's the that's the shortcut for normals. Um, it's probably somewhere in here. I've I have no idea where it would be. Um, Alt N, and then recalculate inside, um, and that 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 tends to work. Um, you can also maybe there's some okay inside and outside. And, yeah, okay. Um, but then realistically what I end up doing is just finding, selecting those faces that are wrong and then uh, just, just flipping them individually, flipping them one by one. Cool. Uh, so, every, uh, and you will forget this a hundred thousand times. I still, every single time, um, model something, forget about face orientation, export it, fall through it because there's no road collision. <laughs> um, and then re-export and yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the course needs to be 30 meters. Um, uh, we have to have all the normals correct. Uh, let's see, what else? I went through the, my, my previous tutorial to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, did I actually not read? Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yes, so now we want to export this. So to export this, uh, we're gonna want our Blender version to be 3.6. Um, and so if you've not done, uh, you can install an older version of Blender uh, 3.6. Uh, and that's you know, long-term long -term support. And rather than 4.0, 4.1, because this add-on has broken in the latest. So we're going to search up for Mario Kart Wii Utils. Um, and it's going to be by, by Gabriella. And go to the GitHub here. And download it from, from here. Um, you can also, if you go directly, search directly to GitHub, then you go to the releases page and download this. Um, and then you download the zip uh, and you keep it as just the zip and then uh, you go edit preferences, you go to your add-ons, install, you know, don't unzip, don't unzip. And then uh, make sure that you can show the zip files. Um, and then, yeah, then you do this and install and uh, and then make sure you check to enable it. Um, I already have it, so I'm not gonna redo that. This gives us access to exporting in a nice format, rather than having to, well, it gives us access to a lot of things, including this is our KCL tool, our collision tool as well. Um, but then when we're exporting this file, um, and right here, you can see we automatically have uh, a bunch of extra stuff. So you can see, hey, there's automatically an export KCL thing. There's an export minimap. Hey, that might be kind of cool. Um, and uh, export BRRES. Um, I've not used this particular option, so I'm not gonna showcase it, um, but I am going to use this. Uh, so there's this, hey, there's a DAE file format, um, but it's not as good as, as th this, this version. So we're gonna use this version, and that's awesome. Um, so then we're going to save it and notably all my textures here, well, my textures are powers of two. So, um, you know, like 128 by 128, 256 by 256, 512, a very largest 10, 1024 by 1024, no larger than that. Um, simplistically speaking, the game will not like you. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, you might get crashes because of just memory overloading. Um, and the textures have to be in the same place. So I've saved all my textures in this folder. So now when I export this D DAE, it automatically references, it, like it, it's right next to all these textures. So then when we try to load it in later, it automatically can read in these textures nicely. So we're gonna export, and we could scale by 100 here. I'm gonna scale by 100 later, doesn't really matter. 
So we export that there. And so now let's let's open up our, our ReStudio, and this is the tool that we're gonna use for creating our BRES ReStudio. And this is an awesome tool. Um, oh, it actually goes to the download page, awesome. It didn't use to do that. It would just take you to, to here, and then you're like, ah, oh, what do I do here? Like, here's a, here's a web version of ReStudio, which is kind of cool. Um, it's pretty out of date at this point. Um, but anyhow, you go to the releases section, and this is actually how you download it, and then um, download the zip, and yada, yada. Okay, cool. So once you have it, we can open, open a file, and uh, you can see all my previous attempts. So here's the blend, here are the textures that I have, uh, here's the arrow that I put on there, um, and then here's our DAE file that we just um, created. Cool. So let's open it. And since we're doing a Mario Kart Wii model, we're going to do a BRS rather than a Galaxy. Our model scale, uh, we're going to put 100. Since we didn't ex uh, yeah, export in the DAE by 100, we're going to scale it by 100 here. Uh, for MIP maps, we do want to automatically generate these. These are like if you have a texture that's far in the way in the distance, you maybe don't want that full 512 by 512 pixels. You might only want like a 32 by 32 because really it's so small, it doesn't you know need all those stuff. Um, so this is just a way to automatically like reduce the texture size as it's further away. You can also um, like make your own MIP maps. Um, there's a tutorial for this in the wiki. Uh, the benefit of that is like, oh, hey, if you want something that looks really that looks really plain when it's farther away, and then when you get close to it, it gets really shiny. Um, like that's that's how you do that. It's with MIP maps. Um, I like to uncheck this, combine identical materials, just because I like to manually know that I've messed up, so that way I can fix it for the future. Um, and we don't have transparent materials, so it doesn't really matter, but sure, why not? Uh, and the rest of this is, is good. Cool. So now the first test that we're going to do, uh, just check to make sure that, hey, is everything working correctly? So you fly around in this viewport by WACD. So we're going to fly up and, and see that, and middle mouse to look around, and hey, we actually can see stuff, and, you know, there's no wall here. And why is that? Well, it's because it's on the it's on the opposite side. It automatically gets cut and cold. Uh, and so if we were to take our wall and turn our surface visibility, visibility to also include the back, now we can see the back side of the object. Um, supposedly, I've not tried this before, you can select all and then it automatically does it for everything. Oh, that's nice. It just worked. I did not expect that to just work. I've never done that before. There you go. Awesome. Um, so if, I wonder if you're like, if you select all and then add a stage. Huh? Does that? Yeah, that worked. All right. Awesome. OK. Sorry, I, I love this tool. I love this tool. It's so good. Um, where was I? So we just imported it. Uh, the main thing is like, yeah, every the surface field visibility, can you see what sides do you want to see? Um, everything else. Uh, so some explanations, these are like, hey, I want to, I want to, actually, I'll, I'll go into that, I'll go into that later. Uh, displacement, um, that's if you want to have some sort of indirect texture. And I, ma I made a video on how shaders work, um, and that contains some of this. Um, Fog, uh, if you have some sort of fog, you know, um, here's where you set. So stencil alpha is, hey, I have something that's either transparent or not transparent. Um, this is, hey, I have something that's like a stained glass and you can sort of see through it, but you know, it's not just, it's not just completely clear. Um, yeah, otherwise you can, you can try to, Try to figure it this out. Oh my goodness, I hate transparency. Uh, Swizzling, you really don't need to do that. Um, yeah, uh, stage, here's where your actual shader stuff happens. So right now, it's um, it's right now taking 
take, so you samplers, which is like, you know, your textures, you can add another sampler, which could be, it could be the same texture, it could also be a different texture. Um, so if we have like a different texture, so now this one material, this, this road material up here, has these two different samplers. And so we could say, well, actually, I want this, this one. And now we have that. Cool. Uh, or you could say, hey, I want this. And then add a stage. And then you can also say, like, well, multiple. I'd, um, but it's easier to just think about what's happening. Um, so right now, this is taking the texture color, multiplying by vertex colors, which it, you know, doesn't have any, so it doesn't matter. Um, or like they're all by default white or something. Um, and then it gets output right now to register three. That's where our calculation result goes to. Uh, calculation, calculation result output goes to register three. Cool. So uh, or you can also say like, well, I want to first add a middle gray. So what's that going to do? That's going to take every single pic pixel and add a 0.5 to it, which means that if this was a pure black texture, then this would be middle gray. But since these are like, well, hey, this already looks close to white here. And like this blue is pretty maxed out on the blue stat. Maybe it's not, maybe it's somewhere a bit on the green. Maybe there's a tiny bit of red. But what's going to happen is that a lot of it is just going to be automatically gone to white, right? Like it's going to get maxed out on all the channels. Um, Brawl Crate automatically uh, uses um, some like incorrect setting um, for the brightness. You know, like I automatically uses two times brightness um, rather than one times brightness. I don't know why. Um, oh, I think I have a guess on why, but I'm anyhow. Um, but then you can say like, hey, well I take that output of register three and then I want to multiply it uh, so I take the output of register three color, and then I multiply it by this color, and then I don't want to add anything to it. And so the, this multiplies the, the two textures together. Uh, and when it's multiplying, anything like less than pure white is going to like bring everything down, because you're multiplying by something less than one. So it's going to bring everything down. Um, and so... Yeah, there's, there's different effects that you can have. You can also say, well, hey, what if I want to, rather than sampling this with the same, you can see the sampler right now is, and the mapping, well, actually we can say like, oh, what, what, this sampler, you can actually like have it, you know, not the same scale as the original. You can have it rotated some, you know, translated over, um, but we can also say, well, maybe it's not rather than taking this UV map. So in here in Blender, you can say, well, hey, we have a UV map and everything has gone to UV map one. But we can also say, well, hey, what if we want a UV map two as well? So what if we give this a new one and then we select this. So now it's mapping to this and then we give it a different set of UVs and then we go back here and when we view it, we can see, hey, well, with this one, we're seeing this. When we look at this one, we're seeing that. And so now we have a different UV channel. So if we had a different UV channel, then we couldn't, you know, give this here. Obviously, we don't have one, so it doesn't know what to do, and it's panicking and whatnot. But we can also say, uh, maybe we use a projection map. Now, hey, it projects it over to the top of this. That's pretty cool. That's how you get some really good water effects, or if you wanted to have some like sparkle um, following it, that's that's how you do it. Because um, we're multiplying this together and then adding and yada yada. Anyhow, in this case, we don't want that. And you'll notice, hey, wait a minute, we just deleted that stage, and and we're still seeing the projection. Why is that? Um, It's, it's because you have so you sometimes have to force recompile. Um, you know, ReStudio is still in alpha. Um, so you sometimes have to force recompile. Sometimes you have to um, 
exit out and go back in. So uh, the way to say like, hey, I just created some really cool material. Um, and I think it's like the preview isn't showing up accurately. What you can do is right click and never mind. You can, well, you could save it. So this is a format that Brawlcrate uses. Um, but actually, you just export this preset. And then road.rs preset. You know, say, hey, the, I, I made all of these two-sided, right? That's, that's what I did. So now when I want to export. So now when I close out and then I open back up this uh, DAE, uh, and I'm going to make it 100 scale again. So now, when I when I look at it, it's right now you know having the the cutting the calling as we call it. Uh, but we what we can do is click here, right click, import multiple presets, and select all of these. And here's our menu of oh here's the target material, here's the preset to apply. Do you want to? You, know, you can change this around. Here's some things: merge nothing, restore defaults. Select OK and bam, now we automatically, you know, it just has it working back again. Um, so one awesome thing is if we, um, I wonder if you can do this from the web. I haven't tried this. Let's let's find out. Uh, if we go uh, view studio. I have no idea. Uh, View Studio, and it's going to take some time because my Windows partition is ungodly slow for, I don't know why. Um, we can see that there is this boost material. Like, hey, that's that's a cool that's a cool thing. Uh, you know, and it uses the environment mapping and and whatnot. It's like, hey, I, I want to be able to use that. And so what you what you can do is maybe not uh, export preset. Um, but if, if you have your dolphin extracted, um, which I have done before, and the way you do that is opening up like a PowerShell or um, I have a git bash uh, new. Is there a nice way to do this? How do you? Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a. I'm a Linux guy. I'm not a, <laughs> not a Windows guy. Anyway, if you can get a command, uh, I guess you can also, yeah, close. Uh, if you do like command, CMD, yeah, you get a command prompt up, and then you can wit. And so this is Wim's ISO tools, um, which when you download, you have to remember to restart your computer. But you can wit extract your MarioCart Wii ISO or whatever you call it. And then here's your new folder. And then once you have that, then you can go and actually, so I've put mine in here, RMC extract. So here's my MarioCart Wii. Um, yeah, here's the ISO that I, or WBFS file. I extracted it here. I go into the data. I go into the files. I go into race, and here's where I have all the all the courses and all the carts, and here's here's where you can modify it, everything. So ReStudio, actually, one of the cool things is that it's able to open SCS files. So what you can do is you can drag it in, drag and drop. You can drag and drop SCS files. You can drag and drop BRRES files. And also, uh, I can't remember if I've used this before. I'm going to presume that I have. Um, if, uh, like, it's a uh, SCS that uh, SCS files aren't always as convenient, so you can always WSCST extract beginner course D, and then once you do that, uh, really, why not with WCST extract. Oh, because I said dot D and there's no dot D. That would be why. Because it outputs the dot D 
yeah, folder. And then you can see, hey, this is what this is what a course is made up of. So here's the file that we're going to be making. If I would <laughs> stop stop talking and actually get to this, um, uh, why is this? Oh, because I already. Oh, that's cool. So it automatically shows the KCL and the the thing. Anyways, that's not what I. Because it's that whole SCS file and anyhow. Um, I wanted to just grab the, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. So you can see we can open this via Brawlcrete, um, and that's, that's nice and convenient. Um, hello, please die. Please die. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, so, so explanation of what happened. Since I extracted it, um, I replace all the versions that I extract um, in Dolphin, so that way loading it is pretty easy. Um, and so I don't have regular files. I've, the extracted files are um, not the you know, beginner course. They're, they're my own um, things. So I can, I can open and, or I can just drag it in. That's probably easier. Oh, this is going to be, sorry, this is going to be the, the, the same thing. But just a PRES file. Yeah, so this is a course that I'm working on. Um, and what I want to do, there's a, there's a boost panel in here. Yeah, uh, and you can see, where is it? It is right here this boost panel. I want to extract it because it's it's kind of cool. So I can click here, extract export, and I want to call it boost. Cool. Save. Yes, I'm going to replace the old one. So now, no, now when I, I want to ap apply an, a preset to this, I can import and I can, nope, not put road. I can put boost over it. And now I have this cool material right here. All right. So that's that's how you do that. Um, be able to you know, right click in here. You can export all materials as presets, which is cool. If you want to add, import a new texture or a texture animation, you can do that in here. You know, Say we want to import this and this to be able to use them as samplers. We can do that. So you can see now they're down here. Um, and anyhow, and then maybe. Nah, I think that's where I want to leave it. Leave it there. So I, um, yeah, because there's like you know there's there's always more more stuff to explore and and whatnot. But this is this is probably good. So now we're going to save it as, and we're in our tutorial folder, and I'm going to create a new folder, because actually we want to start um, putting together a compila compilation of all the stuff that we've made. So I'm going to call this um, beginner course, because that's a good place to start. Um, so you can see previously, psh, 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 you can see race course. These are all the names that Mario Kart Wii recognizes. Um, so Desert Course is um, Dry Drive Runes, uh, Factory Course is Toad's Factory. Um, you can see the list of Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart Wii file names. And like, here's, here's all the names of different things. The main thing to watch out for the courses that crash if you haven't you know, set up things properly, our Moonview Highway, uh, Shy Guy Beach, and not really Shy Guy Beach, sometimes, uh, Sherbet Land, and um, maybe the Shy Guy Beach. Am I being stupid? No, it is that. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so we, we created a new folder called Beginner Course. And then we're going to call this our course model. We could call this bob.brs. Um, and that would be a BRES file. 
Um, but then, you know, when we go in here, uh, CTs and textures. Oh, not textures. In tutorial, like it when we com uh, compile this all together, not compile, but when we make this into an SES file, uh, it's not going to know that this is a course model, right? Um, and that has certain properties. So we're going to just rename this as um, course underscore model, and it has to be this this, this format. Cool. So that's our course model. Um, we can also view this um, a different way. So rather than just ReStudio, um, we can also, this is the best website to ever exist, noclip.website. And you can see, hey, Toad's Factory, what does it look like? Well, that's cool. Ah, what if we went in here, textures, and hey, I really like, I really like some texture, like maybe this texture. I really like that. If you're on Firefox, you can uh, uh, maybe shift right click. You definitely used to be able to save the images, and maybe it's only for certain things. Uh, so like, hey, what does Super Mario Galaxy Good Egg Galaxy look like? Um, fill load. The point I'm going to make is that you can drag and drop your BRAS file into here and your SCS files and see what they look like. Except Firefox is crashing, so we're not going to do that. Cool. Um, so now we've made our um, I can just remove this UV map. So now that we've made our um, course model, I'm going to save this as our KCL. And we're going to start work on our, our KCL. Cool. So with Gabby's Marie Kurt Wii Utilities, um, here's it in here. Uh, so auto it automatically scales it up by 100. Um, some some extra thi things. Uh, psh, 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 psh. KCL settings, that's all cool. Uh, you can see it does some areas. So if you want to have like fog in a certain area, that's that's how you do that. Um, it can do some opening camera help. So like view it in Blender, create your cameras in Blender, move them around. There's a tutorial for that um, on Gabby's channel. Um, similar thing of route utilities. And then if you're trying to like, um, you can see like right now it's pretty shiny the materials are, but it's not going to look that way in game. It's actually going to look something like this. That's more what it's going to look like in game. Um, so some convenience, excuse me, convenience functions. But you can see export KCL. Uh, that's, that's not going to work. So uh, what we want to do uh, maybe is say, I want to select these and say, I want you to be some type of road and I want you to be a smooth road. And wheel depth really doesn't matter. Shadow is if you're doing KCL shadows, which I think there's a wiki page on it. Yeah, I, there probably is. Um, and then you link that up with a post effect file. And that's how the player goes dark. Um, anyhow, and you can see, hey, do I want a triggerable road? Do I want a reject road? But then once you have that, you just select all the faces and then you apply that. Cool. And so now it auto-separated. Auto it auto-gave this, this thing its own name. And you can also see in, in here, it automatically has the material name as well. So these are the flag files that I used in my previous video. And it just automatically does that here. So uh, we're just going to select the, the rest of these. Control shift clicking. Right? Um, do, 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 here. And then anything without a flag uh, will um, not be exported by, by default. So if we, you know, just didn't want these this wall, but didn't want to just, you know, go through the time of deleting it, and then, oh, well, maybe I want it again later, 
just like keep it there. And then as long as it doesn't have one of these things, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna matter. Um, so this one, we're gonna say, hey, I want this to maybe be a, some sort of, I could do like a flip trick ramp, or I could also do something like, oh, let's make a loop cut. And then let's have maybe this part of it be a boost. So I'm gonna say a boost ramp. Uh, sorry, a boost pad. I just get these messed up. And then uh, in here is going to be maybe a boost pad that's trickable. Cool. And then the rest of it is just going to be a wall, maybe. And there's different types of wall. There's you know, fast wall. There's uh, Obviously, this is the main one, but a lot of these are sound effects. There's like different types of sound effects. Um, there's also, nope, I don't want to import a case here. Um, there's also some special effects walls. Where is it? Special wall. Um, so like cactus. Um, that's there. Anyhow, we'll just take our generic wall and let's put an ice thing on it. Cool. And that's our wall. So now everything has a, a flag applied to it. So then we just export KCL. We want to put our KCL in the same folder as, as here. And then we call it uh, course.kcl. And that's that it has to be called that for the game to recognize, hey, this is a KCL associated with the course. Um, scale is 100, that's cool. Uh, only objects with our KCL flag, yep, that's what we want. Lower walls. So if you have some walls that are like, um, that come down from here, right, and all these are walls, then what happens when I try to drive over it this way, it's like, well, hey, maybe that wall's actually gonna, like, this is the infamous bean corner, if, if you're aware of that. Um, but it will collide with the player. I'm like, hey, we don't want that. So we can either, there's two ways of dealing with that. We can either make soft walls, uh, or we can lower walls, uh, and lower walls is, is good for what we want. It literally just lowers them, um, which is cool. And then all of these are, are good, and all of these are good. So now we have our course KCL, and it's as simple as that. Um, yeah, and then in the next video, we'll talk about some, some KMP stuff and, and whatnot. Um, but like I said, the, the primary things that we've done is say, well, hey, how do we go from, um, you know, make, make sure this, this model is above y equals zero, make sure the scale is, is 30, and we use our good, good friend, the measure it tool. Um, and then uh, when we export it, we file export and we go through the OBJ and then we bring it into ReStudio and then we can automatically import and export presets, which is really nice. We can edit multiple things at once. We can do our surface visibility. We can do our shaders. Um, we, you can see this one in particular has, it's right now has a displacement map and you can see if I change around the scale, then we're, we're changing around the indirect map scale here. Anyhow, that's not super important. And then we exported that, and then we, uh, then we went back into Blender, and then we did our KCL, and we used uh, Gabby's excellent Mario Kart Wii tools, and we just like said, hey, this is what we want, and you know we can have a road here, and then a road, uh, here and have it be the same thing of road. So like this is the exact same as, as this. Um, and you can see there are different objects and whatnot, but it's not gonna matter when we, when we actually go and export and, and whatnot. And then in the next video, we'll um, create our KMP and all the rest of the files and then put it in and export it. All right.